it's Miss Miklos, and in today's lecture, we are talking specifically about what we call arithmetic sequences. And um, last class was super general about different sequences, different summations, and today we're really narrowing in on this specific type. And so I just want to pay attention to our definition of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, and it says, a sequence is arithmetic when the differences between consecutive terms are the same. So the sequence a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, up through a sub n is arithmetic when there's a number d such that a sub 2 minus a sub 1 equals a sub 3 minus a sub 2 equals a sub 4 minus a sub, a sub 3 equals d. And we call that the common difference. Basically, we say that D is any term minus the previous term. Okay, and that's what I wrote out right here in other words. Okay, but any term minus the previous term will give us our common difference. So for these problems, we need to determine what is our common difference. Okay, so first of all, I need to make sure it's arithmetic. So it looks here like we are adding the same number each time. In fact, if I take any number, so I'm going to take 11 and subtract the previous number, I would get 4. So notice 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. We can guess our next number in this sequence would be 23 and then 27 and so forth. Okay, um, after we go through A, B, and C, we'll look back at this equation and notice if we see any similarities or any hints. Okay, so to find our common difference in this second term, um, or the second sequence, I should say, I'm going to take negative 3 minus 2, and I get negative 5. And let's just make sure that this works. In order to be a common difference, it needs to work throughout the entire sequence. So negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus negative 5 is negative 13. So it is indeed working. Okay, our last one here, um, I'm going to do 5 fourths minus 1 which is 1 fourth. Okay, and if I do 5 fourths plus 1 fourth, that would be 6 fourths, which is 3 halves. 6 fourths plus 1 fourth is 7 fourths, so I can see that that indeed works. Now, if we compare what we got as our common difference um, with what these expressions were, you guys may notice that these coefficients of n Okay, because this would really be like one fourth, um, were actually what our common difference was. Okay, so that's like a little hint. If they give us an equation, our common difference is going to be the coefficient of our variable. Another thing we're going to have to do is find the first five terms of a sequence. So notice they're giving us the first term and the common difference. Okay, we've said previously that the common difference is equal to any term, so I'm going to use a sub 2 minus our first term. So what that means is that if I wanted to isolate a sub 2, I would add a sub 1 over. So to get to the second term, I'm taking my first term and adding the common difference. So 5 is the first term of the sequence, 5 plus 1 half. Um, I'm going to write 5.5 because that's exact, so that's fine. If I added 1 half again, I would get 6, and then 6.5, and then 7. So the nice thing about um, finding the terms when we have a common difference is as soon as we know that common difference, we can just keep adding that to each term, and we get the next term in the sequence. So if we look at B, okay, the first term is 12. The difference is negative 4, so 12 plus negative 4 is 8. 8 plus negative 4 is 4, 4 plus negative 4 is 0, 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. And honestly, if they give us a sub 1 and the common difference, it does not get any more difficult than this. Now, what will get a little bit more difficult is that's not always the information that's going to be given to us. So I want to focus on this particular equation. Some of you guys have seen this in a previous class a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And I just want to kind of talk a little bit about what this equation actually means. a sub n represents any term in the sequence. 
Okay, so um, often it'll be like that's what we're trying to find, like a sub 7 or a sub 9. But sometimes um, we can just substitute in any value there. Okay, and notice it is a sub n. So I want to talk about this n next. n is the order in the sequence. So if the ninth term was 25, I would put 25 in for a sub n and 9 would be the order in the sequence, so that's what we would put in for n. a sub 1, which we've already talked about, is our common, or I'm sorry, is our first term. And d is our common difference. Okay, so this is definitely a formula you guys need to have memorized, and we need to know how to use it. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. Okay, so let's do one that is a little bit tougher here. So example number three, it says writing the terms of an arithmetic sequence. The fourth term of the sequence is 20. The 13th term is 65. Write the first several terms of the sequence. Okay, so they tell us a sub 4 is 20, a sub 13 is 65. And so they somehow come up with this fancy equation, a sub 13 equals a sub 4 plus 9d. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go through that using the same logic, but um, I, I think it might make a little bit more sense. Okay, this is normally what I think of. Okay, if we're looking at this equation, it's or I'm sorry, this sequence, um, we don't know what the first three terms are. We know that the fourth term is 20. And then we have 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and the ninth term, we don't know. 10th term, we don't know. 11th, 12th, and finally the 13th term is 65. Okay, so in this problem, um, what they're really trying, what they want us to find are the first several terms. Okay, which is kind of a general thing, but let's say that we are going to find these first four terms. Now, in order to find those, the issue we have is that we do not know the first term, and I do not know what the common difference is. Okay, but we do know this equation, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And the way that I like to think about it is we're taking this sequence right here, and it's just like we're going to fast forward, boop, and stop right there. I know you like the sound effect there. Okay, but this now is what we are going to call our temporary a sub 1. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and this is going to be our temporary a sub 10. Okay, and a good way to double check that we're the correct distance apart here, 10 minus 1 is 9. This was originally the 13th and the 4th. 13 minus 4 is also 9. Okay, so often I will just write, okay, 13 minus 4 equals n minus 1. That's how we're going to try and figure it out. So I get 9 equals n minus 1, so 10 is n. So that's how we figure out that it's the 10th term. Now, I'm just calling these the temporary values because that's what's going to help me figure out um, what our common difference is, and then we can work backwards and figure this stuff out. So I'm going to say 65, because that is our temporary 10th term, equals our te temporary first term is 20, since 65 is our 10th term, I'm going to do 10 minus 1 times d. So I get 45 equals 9d, so 5 is our common difference. So if we look at our sequence here, now if we're looking back to this being the fourth term, if I want to move forward, I would add our common difference. So it would be 25, 30, and so forth. If I want to move backwards, I can subtract. So I have 20. If I subtracted, I would get 15, 10, and our first term would be 5. Okay, so with this particular equation, we are going to have to think a little bit and manipulate some of the values in order to successfully substitute them into our equation. 
The last equation we are finding, we call this the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. Um, just a reminder what a finite sequence is, it means that it actually ends. It's not infinite, it doesn't go forever. And we see S sub n. Okay, this means the sum of n terms. So that is going to be our actual number um, when we add all the values together. n is the number of terms. And then a sub 1 is our first term and a sub n is our last term. Okay, so we have s sub n equals n divided by 2 times the quantity a sub 1 plus a sub n. Now, this formula is helpful because it saves us a lot of time um, finding all of these terms, or finding the sum, rather than just adding values, figuring out the terms first and then adding them together. That can take a lot of time. Okay, so our sequence here. 40, 37, 34, 31, where n equals 10. So first I'm going to write s sub n equals n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. And we have a little bit of a problem here. Okay, I'm finding the sum after 10 terms, so I can do 10 over 2. I know our first term is 40, but I don't know what the 10th term is here. The reason why this needs to be the 10th term is because they tell us that n is 10. I'm finding the sum after 10 terms. So uh, for the moment, I'm just going to write a sub 10. Okay, and we're going to have to figure out what this value actually is. So the good news is we have learned another equation. And before I write a sub 10, let me take it back a step and we'll say a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub 10 equals 40 plus 10 minus 1. Our common difference here, 37 minus 40 would be negative 3. Okay, and it would make sense that that's negative 3 because we see that this sequence is decreasing. So, in my calculator, I'm going to do 40 plus 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. We can actually do this in our heads as well. So I get that the 10th term is actually 13. So I'm replacing a sub, n, or a sub 10 with 13. And now I'm going to say, okay, well, the sum after 10 terms is 5 times 53, which is 265. Okay, so this is something that is much quicker using this formula versus finding what all 10 of these terms would be and then adding them up individually. The other way that we're going to see this written is using our summation um, notation, which we talked about last class. So this is telling me to find the first term to the hundredth term. And even though this looks a little frightening, I actually think it's quicker than doing something like this because... We know our sum formula is s sub n equals n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. The upper limit of summation tells me that I am going from the first term to the hundredth term. So I know that n is 100. So all we really need to do here is I need to figure out, okay, what is our first term and what is our hundredth term? That was an awful 100. Let me try and write that again there. There we go. Okay, so just like we learned last class, um, to find a sub 1, I'm substituting 1 in for n. So I would say it is 4 times 1, which is 4. To find a sub 100, I would substitute 100 in for n, so I would get 400. So to find the sum after 100 terms, I would do 50 times 404, which is going to be 20,200. Okay, so this is just a quick introduction um, to arithmetic sequences and finding the sum of arithmetic sequences. As you guys go through your homework, they're not all going to be exactly like this. So you guys really need to rely on your knowledge. We need to make sure that we have this formula 
and this formula definitely memorized. Okay, that's stuff I would expect you guys to know for a quiz. So have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys in class.